Located in the southern park of Johannesburg, we pass one of the biggest sporting arenas. We visit a significant place of memorial in the South African struggle against the apartheid oppression. Also getting to see some of Africa's biggest and smallest wildlife. The awakening of a new district combines history and emerging artists into building a new generation of creatives. This is today's journey through Johannesburg in the season final of Josie Napakazi from Sorito via the zoo to Maboneng. In March 2020, just like the rest of the world, South Africa experienced its own strict lockdown in what was, and still is, a global history due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A country whose diverse culture blooms from social interactions sadly saw everyone bound to their homes. What we see today was filmed just two months before COVID-19 enforced the world to go into lockdown. On this part of the road, many people built and live in informal settlements, also called shacks. On the way to our first destination, we enter and pass through Chris Hani Road, named after the leader of the South African Communist Party and Chief of Staff of Unconto Ke Sizwe, the armed arm of the ANC during the fight against apartheid. Passing through Pratia Gardens Mall, we also come to pass a residential area of Pratia North. Find more pictures, videos and information about South Africa on our social media channels on Vero, True Social, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Chris Honey Road is the longest road in Soweto, with a distance of about 12 kilometers. It links roughly 70% of the suburbs in Soweto and further to Josie's Southgate. We pass the crossing to Koma Road. Koma Road connects the central and northern townships such as Dobsonville, Jabulani and Molitsani to Krishani Road. We pass the 4.5 hectares huge Torosa Park, spreading from Krishani Road to Ntuli Street in Rockville. Torosa Park was awarded as rehabilitation project in 2010. The park has benches, picnic spots, fountains, protected bird life and large fields perfect for ball games. The Ria Vaya bus system has a large bus station in Torosa Park. The routes of the Ria Vaya bus service connect the townships of Suito with the trunk routes to Josie's city centre. Not too far from the park is Maponya Mall, a huge shopping center. Maponya Mall was opened in September 2007 and is 65,000 square meters. Maponya Mall was built, named and owned by Richard Maponya, who died in early January 2020. From several kilometers away, we are able to see the two towers of an old coal-fired power plant. This is the Orlando Power Station, better known as Suito Towers. Commissioned in 1942, the power plant served Johannesburg with 300 megawatt energy output for 56 years and was decommissioned in 1998. The power station's energy carrier was coal. The construction started already in 1939, but was interrupted by the beginning of World War II. The power station was finally completed in 1955. The major transformation to an entertainment and business center began in 2006. Today, both cooling towers relate to a bridge that serves as a starting platform for bungee and base jumping.
Another bungee swing is located inside of one of the towers. These towers are a landmark of Soweto. Both towers are regularly sprayed or painted with different motives. The towers have also been part of the season final of the first South African Netflix original, Shadow. Braai is a term that South Africans use to refer to their barbecue. If a laid-back and chilled afternoon and braai meat is what you are looking for, then Chaf Posi is the spot. Chaf Posi is located next to the Suito Towers. It offers locals and tourists a fascinating experience of a braai and chillas, also known to locals as relaxation. The main part of the braai meat is steak, or sausages also referred to as wars. Braai is served with pap made from mealy meal or ground corn maize. A variety of sides, such as chakalaka, complemented with a cold beverage. On our way, leaving Soweto in the direction of Johannesburg, we passed the house of Winnie Madigizela Mandela. She was the first and later ex-wife of Nelson Mandela and, like her husband, an anti-apartheid activist and politician. Her supporters call her the mother of the nation. She led the armed arm of the ANC during the violent opposition against the apartheid government in the mid-1980s. The Commission to Reconditioning the Apartheid Era, established by the Nelson Mandela government, found Winnie Mandela to have been politically and morally accountable for the gross violations of human rights by the ANC. This included kidnapping, torture and murder of apartheid government collaborators. The piercing sound of the Vuvuzela welcomes us to a big sports arena. This is Soccer City. The football and rugby stadium is officially named FNB Stadium and is located in Nazrek between the west gate of Johannesburg and the border of Soweto. It became world famous during the FIFA World Cup in 2010 but opened in 1989. The stadium has another nickname, the Calabash due to its resemblance to the African pot. Soccer City was the first place where Madiba spoke after his release from prison in 1990. It regularly hosts local events, the Africa Cup of Nations, and is a permanent host to Soweto's highly competitive derby match between two of Soweto's finest soccer rival teams, Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs. This small introduction gives us an insight into how one of the biggest sport events in Soweto looks and feels like. The Soweto Derby is always played in Soccer City as the stadium has a higher capacity compared to the Orlando Stadium. It is a tradition that fans of the winning team give a loaf of bread to the fans of the losing team to dry their tears. It is also not seldom to see coffins in the stadium as the fans want to bury the opposing team. On our way back to Savito, we get to pass the old mining areas. Before we reach our next destination, we are passing the Orlando Stadium, the home of the Orlando Pirates. The stadium that was opened in 1959 also regularly hosts rugby matches. It was also the destination of the students' protests in the Savito Uprising. We are in Orlando at one of the most important places in the fight against the apartheid system. This is the Hector Peterson Memorial. Remember the 12-year-old Hector Peterson who was killed during the Soweto Uprising on June 16, 1976 in Orlando West? The photograph of Sam Nzima showing the mortally wounded Hector Peterson with his sister Antoinette on his side and being carried by Mbuiza Makubo. The photograph stands for the Soweto Uprising and the sacrifices being made for the freedom fight. 
Often, Peterson is called the first child to be shot in this day, but in truth, the first child shot and killed was Hastings Nglovu, but this incident was not photographed. Hector Peterson and Hastings Nglovu are both buried at the Avalon Cemetery in Sowieto. The uprising in Sowieto happened because of the enforcement by the apartheid government to teach Afrikaans in all secondary schools. June 16th is now remembering as Youth Day to honor young people and bring attention to their needs. The memorial is close to the famous Villa Kasi Street that also homes the house of Nelson Mandela. When it becomes night, our tour through Suvito ends and we will move to our next destination in Josie city center. Find more pictures, videos and information about the Suvito Towers on our social media channels on Vero, True Social, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. We are passing the Goethe Institute and reaching Zoo Lake. The Zoo Lake is part of an 81 hectare area that was donated to the city of Johannesburg in 1903 by Werner Beit and Co. and Max Michaelis. It was part of the Bram Fontaine farm owned by Hermann Eckstein. The 81 hectare area includes Zoo Lake itself the Johannesburg Zoo and the South African Military Museum. Since 1904, this 55 hectare huge area is the home of 2,096 animals of 326 species. It's the Zoo of Johannesburg. Today we will only see a few of the 2,096 animals in the zoo. The Asian water buffalo originates in the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia and China. Today it is also found in Europe, Australia, North America, South America and some African countries. The wild water buffalo represents the ancestor of the domestic water buffalo. At least 172 million water buffaloes exist worldwide. Chagelafo speki, the Sitatunga, is a medium-sized antelope found throughout Central Africa. The English explorer John Hanning Speak first described the species in 1863. The Sitatunga is active mainly during the early hours after dawn, the last one or two hours before dusk and at night. They feed mainly on fresh grasses and browse. Loxodonta africana, better known as the African elephant, is a keystone species on the continent and reaches an average age of 70, while in sub-Saharan Africa, poachers kill at least one elephant every day and the populations are endangered, there is an overpopulation in southern Africa due to efforts to protect elephants. Elephants have about 40,000 muscles and eat a fifth of their body weight a day. Both the African bush elephant and the smaller African forest elephant are herbivores and live in groups. Both species are listed as vulnerable species on the IUCN Red List. Elephant fossils have been excavated in Africa dating back to the Middle Pliocene. 
Johann Friedrich Blumenbach described the African elephant first in 1797. He called the species Elaphus africanus. Georges Cuvier proposed the generic name Luxodonta. The genetic divergence between the African bush and forest elephants dates 2.6 to 5.6 million years ago, according to nuclear DNA sequence analysis. Scientists also proved that several African bush elephants carried mitochondrial DNA of African forest elephants. It indicates that they already hybridized in the savanna forest transition zone in ancient times. Find more pictures, videos and information about the Johannesburg Zoo on our social media channels on Vero, True Social, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. This is Ara chlorapterus, also known as the green-winged macaw. The largest of its species is widely spread in the forests and woodlands of northern and central South America. Habitat loss and illegal capture for the parrot trade in recent years declined its numbers. In 1999, a new population appeared on Trinidad. The majestic giraffa Camelopardalis giraffa, the subspecies of giraffe, resides in southern Africa. She appears with rounded or blotched spots, some with starlight extensions on a light tan background. The South African giraffe, or also named Cape giraffe, was first described in 1784. In 2016, the wild population was estimated at 31,500 individuals. After local extinction in southern Africa, the Cape giraffes have been reintroduced in many areas like Swaziland. Cape giraffes are herbivorous animals and usually live in savannas and woodlands where food plants are available. They are also on the IUCN Red List, facing extinction in the wild in the medium-term future, if nothing is done for conservation of the species. Investigations of the drastic decrease of the species showed that approximately 12,000 giraffes live on private-owned farms, ranches or national parks and not in their own habitat. Today, we only get a short view of the Anglo-Boer War Memorial, which also marks the location of the South African National Museum of Military History. The memorial was completed in 1914. This is the animal subgenus Hippotigris, better known as zebra. Three zebra species are already extant. Zebras can be found in the savannas, grassland, woodlands, shrublands and mountainous areas in eastern and southern Africa. The English name zebra dates back to 1600. This observation place is marked with names of visitors of the King of Africa. A Pantera Leo lays in the afternoon sun of Johannesburg. Lions are social species and form groups called prides. In Africa, lions inhabit grasslands and savannas in East and Southern Africa. With a rapid decrease in numbers, African countries are constantly open and support conservation strategies, centers and protected areas across the continent to protect the African lion.
It's time for a short stop to get a panorama view. We are passing St. John's Preparatory School in the suburb Hewton, founded as All Boys Private School in 1898. Today the school accepts boys and girls at various levels of education. The bell tower on the left was completed in 1933 and houses one of the largest bells in South Africa. The college has eight college houses, a main and crypt chapel. The Old Johannian Association is the official alumni organization of the college. We pass the Sunnyside Office Park in Parktown. It is one of Josie's big office park, offering offices and co-working spaces for companies and freelancers. We get a short view to the Transvaal Scottish War Memorial designed by William Tate Connor and shows Captain Thomas Hesketh Ross, who served in the South West African campaign. The statue was moved several times and now overlooks St. Andrew's Road in Parktown. See the beautiful street painting at Constitutional Hill and look to the Hillbro Tower which was erected in 1968. The tower, also known as Telcom Tower, was constructed for South African posts and telecommunications, which later became Telcom. Many cities around the world have seen an increased focus on the atmosphere of the inner city. This is how Maboneng became alive. It is located on the southeastern side of Josie's CBD and has developed from a place of art to a hip place that infuses art and entertainment with restaurants, retail stores, backpackers and hotels. It is Josie's new hub of inspiration, business and tourist destination. A place where emerging artists are building up a new generation of creatives. This part of Maboneng is called Little Addis, where you get traditional Ethiopian food. Take a look at this tiger painting called Unleash Tiger, made in 2014 by the South African-based British artist Sonny. The wall painting of Yvonne Chaka Chaka represents the historical memory of black African music. In the 1970s until the late 1980s, the apartheid government prohibited the playing of black African music on radio stations. The apartheid government believed the music would support violence and raise protests against them due to the misunderstanding of lyrics sung in the native languages. This small corner offers the best coffee in town and represents a place of relaxing in Maboneng. These containers are part of a modern living project of artists and creatives. We are on the way to the Agog, a wine and restaurant bar downstairs of the Agog Gallery in the first and second floor, with a rooftop bar completing the building. The Agog Gallery homes African art by young as well as established African contemporary artists. It also offers space for private parties, day conferences, think tank sessions and corporate functions. The Agog Gallery rooftop is also called the Q Club. It hosts a whiskey and gin bar and a live stage performance platform. The painting of this Ethiopian woman of the Mazuri tribe represents the message of the artist that women should be accepted as relevant and recognized in society. From here we can see the Ellis Park Stadium, also named Emirates Stadium. Here a picture of Nelson Mandela as a young boxer is drawn on the wall of the building. We are in the front of the Marabi Club, a scenic club with live jazz performances. The club opens at 6 p.m. in the evenings. 
This is one of the hottest and most authentic music and dining places in Jersey, with Chef Catlejo as chef de cuisine. He was born in Joburg and trained in Cape Town. The club got its name from the urban culture that rose in the 1920s and 1930s. The club is located in the basement of the Hallmark House. Just a few floors above the Marabi Club is the rooftop bar in the Hallmark House, one of the Maboneng highlights. The Hallmark House is a mix of hotel, residential units and conference facilities. Enjoy the 360 degrees view above the skyline of Josie. This lengthy street artwork by Nelson Macamo on Van Beek Street catches the everyday life of children, their movements and emotions. Macamo is famous for his mixture of bright colors on a dark background, an artistic representation of what it means to preserve culture over generations. Close to the artwork of Nelson Macamo is a skate park for street and neighboring kids, which is one of many social projects in Maponeng to keep kids away from crime. Every kid entering the skate park must stay for at least two hours every day. At the end of our journey through Maboneng, we get a view of one of the oldest and biggest libraries in the world, the Johannesburg City Library. More than two million books and half a million collectives counting are available. We conclude our tour through the groundbreaking neighborhood of Maboneng as one of South Africa's famous summer storms begins. Find more pictures, videos and information about Maboneng on our social media channels on Vero, True Social, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. The COVID-19 pandemic hit South Africa unlike anything in the past. Families have been divided, loved ones are gone and social inequality, privileged and non-privileged and corruption is more visible than ever before. According to the World Health Organization, over 20,000 South Africans died due to COVID-19 until November 2020. The dream of a rainbow nation is still alive. Places like Hector Peterson Memorial, remembering the past, to places like Maboneng, pointing the way to the kind of generation that Nelson Mandela dreamt of. The born frees have a chance like no other generation before, allowing Madiba's dream to become a reality. Nzansi for sure.
Josie Napakazzi will return in 2022 as part of our new original Orbit Nzanzi.